Hi, uh, this video is going to cover imaginary and complex numbers, which we did a little bit of a preview of the other day in class. The main thing you need to understand is that I, so I is a symbol for an imaginary number, it has that little curve on the end, and it equals the square root of negative 1. So previously we basically lied to you as math teachers when we said you couldn't take the square root of a negative, because you can, it's just it's not a real number, it's an imaginary number. So here's an example with the square root of negative 18. I can rewrite that as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Well, we just discovered that the square root of negative 1 is i. We know that the square root of 9 is 3, and then the square root of 2 would stay like that. So I would actually rewrite this as 3i square root 2. Normally you put the i on the end unless there's a radical, and then that would be after the i. Let's look at another way to do this. So. Let's try and solve one. If I have x squared minus 64 equals 0, I could do x squared equals 64, take the square root of both sides. So x actually equals plus or minus 8. Remember that plus or minus. It's not just 8 because negative 8 squared is also 64. So the plus minus comes in when you're dealing with taking the square root of a variable squared. Now this x squared plus 4 equals 0. We've recently talked about how that's not factorable. So let's try doing that the same way. I take the square root of both sides, and now I'm going to have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. So I'll separate that into plus or minus square root negative 1, square root 4. Okay? And now that gives me plus or minus 2i. And I put the i second because we always write the i on the end unless there's a radical there. So x squared plus 4 equals 0. The x in that is plus or minus 2i. Next, the other thing that you really do, just you have to just flat out memorize and know, is that i squared equals negative 1. That's the one we'll use. We use both the i equals the square root of negative 1 and i squared equals negative 1 a lot. You also, um, and these are pure imaginary numbers, like 3i is a pure imaginary number. But we also have complex numbers. And it's written in the form a plus bi, like 4 plus 3i, okay? So a and b are real numbers, but the i makes it imaginary. So instead of just being a pure imaginary number with no real number being added on, we have complex, and they're always written with the i last. I'm going to show you one more thing before class. Um, and again, you just need to be taking notes on this video. I'm not giving you any practice problems with it. I just want you to have a preview before we come to class. Because this is probably, of everything we do with imaginary numbers, I'd say the most complicated. So 2i divided by 3 plus 6i. You cannot have imaginary numbers in a denominator, kind of like you wouldn't have a fraction in a denominator, okay? Or negative exponents in a denominator. So we have to figure out a way to get that imaginary number out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by what's called the complex conjugate. Okay, sorry for any noise. I paused because the bell rang. All right, so what I have to do so that I can get that imaginary number out of the denominator is I multiply by what's called the complex conjugate. So you keep the, right, remember the a plus bi I just showed you? The a stays the same. Three stayed the same. You change the sign of the bi. So if originally I had had negative 6i, my complex conjugate would be plus 6i. So that sign you just change. And let's see what happens because we're going to multiply. So we're going to have to do, whoops, we're going to have to do the distributive property. Okay? So I'll do my numerator first. So 2i times 3 is 6i. And 2i times negative 6i is negative 12i squared. My denominator is going to give me 9 minus 18i plus 18i, and, and hopefully some of you will notice that this is really a, the difference of 2 squared in factored form, 2 squares. That's why it helps. And because of that, because that's really basically those complex conjugates end up being factored form of the difference of 2 squares, the middle terms cancel out. So my 18i and my negative 18i goes away. Awesome. So now, the other thing to remember is i squared is really negative 1, so I'm not going to have an i in my denominator. This is why this works so well. So that gives me 6i minus 12 times negative 1 divided by 9 minus 36 times negative 1. I'm going to rewrite this in a plus bi format, so that will give me 12 plus 6i divided by 45. 
we separate the fractions. We're going to do 12 45ths plus 6 45ths I. And now I reduce my fractions or simplify them. So it's 4 15ths plus 2 15ths I. And you all, this keeps it in the A plus B I form. You don't want to write it with the 12 plus 6 I divided by 45. You always separate them so that you have the A plus B I format. And so that would be my final answer, 4 15ths plus 2 15ths I. And we'll go over more of this in class. Thanks.